Jody, my friend, I think, I think we just went live. If things work, what? which I don't Wait, know. Sometimes I didn't get my I hair do, done. Sometimes they don't. Oh, hang on, everybody. Jody's mm. rocking a new do this week. So a new do, which is especially <laughs> but, funny. If you've never seen me, I got no hair. <laughs> I was gonna say, but but Jody, we 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 have no Jody visual presence. Well, just imagine whatever <laughs> sounds cool is to you. Yeah, imagine. And it's even better than that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. We are back with uh, a live modeling session that could go horribly off the rails because I uh, I have not really looked into what we're doing today here, Jody. Um I I just I just showed up. I hope I hope that this picture that I'm seeing is actually what it's supposed to be, but I don't know. <laughs> this will be fun. Uh, so a little yes uh, for our friends across the world. Please let us know where you're coming in from. A lot of you totally can appreciate that this won't matter so much, won't be a big deal. But locally in the U.S., at least the. Uh, National Basketball Association and the NBA Finals are happening, and our team, Denver's team, has made it into the finals, which I believe is the first time they've ever done so. And so, so the first, yeah. Does What's finals? Up? Does finals mean the last two? What is finals? I don't. I don't. I'm not a. I'm not a sports ball person here. It's in basketball. It's up to seven games. It's the best of. Uh, seven games, so you got to win four games. Uh, um, but it's but it's just these are the only two teams left. These are the ones left. It's it's the Denver Nuggets and Miami Heat, and uh, I'm I don't follow huh. very much during the season, and I don't think Jody's much of a hoops ball fan <laughs> either. <laughs> Boy, is that an understatement? But speaking of Miami Heat, everybody's chiming in that it's really sunny and. Well, at least sunny, but sunny and hot everywhere. And it is not either of those things in at least Longmont, Colorado today. It is it is dreary and chilly. Well, well it might not be that chilly, but it looks looks chilly because it's so cloudy out. <laughs> well, well spring like. Hopefully it will run up for your weekend. Or not. I'm, I don't mind clouds. Yeah, that too. The rain's been lovely. Gives so, me an excuse yeah. to stay inside and watch some basketball. I, right? You can <laughs> watch again tomorrow uh, if you... All of a sudden start to care. All of a sudden start to care. <laughs> the, I, I definitely am a fair weather... I played basketball in high school, but I, I definitely am a fair weather... Uh, oh, hey, now that we're in the finals, I'll pay attention, but I have not. Have not. Um, this is the arena in Denver. Uh, it was for, I think, two or three decades known as the Pepsi Center. And then I, I only learned that it, just in the past few years, it's been renamed to the Ball Arena. And when that's you said Ball Arena do. before, I thought you were just being vague about the different sports that could be played in there. We could play ball, whatever ball you choose. Basketball. I don't know what other ball you play indoors, though. So, uh, or did hockey did ball? Perhaps hockey ball. Yeah, maybe I was just saying that this is uh, the fine arts ball arena, and I just speak with a bad accent. It's you know where you go to watch the Nutcracker and the ball arenas. There you go. Okay. I don't. I don't know where we're going with this. Let's let's pivot. Let's pivot. It's still it's still uh, at least in the model I've got still has the Pepsi Center up here, but now it's not. Anyway, so let's look at let's. This is going to be an interesting challenge. I I um I think what we'll do the backside of this backs up to like train tracks here at this point, and we're you know not going to mess with the backside, I, I'm pretty sure. So we're gonna try and get as much of this kind of facing side done. And here's the challenge. Now this model I pulled from the warehouse, this is from the old days back when 
Google Earth uh, was populated by a bunch of SketchUp models <laughs> way back in the day. Um, here's the thing. If you're going to model stuff like this, you want to, like, I, I like to say, you want to model with your curves. SketchUp, as we know, doesn't have true curves. It has a series of segments. And ideally, when we go into place like all these columns or deal with, um, you know, these cutouts working their way around here, we would be placing them it aligned with uh, the segments that we have drawn. And I suspect that I, I don't, I don't know, you know, that like we could do the right number of curves here and the right number. And when I say curves, I mean segments here to, a, to align. So I think that's going to be challenge. Number one is we're going to not be able to work exactly with the right number of segments. Um, in fact, that's not just challenge number one. That is that is going to be the main thing that's going to come up, and if we uh, and and make this uh, interesting. Um, so let's, let's so dive not, in. We're not going to just take this model that you're already orbiting it around and just be like, then you're not going like, to sneak sneak it in at the end, last minute or something like that, right? Here we'll we'll just draw a little uh we'll just draw this little thing here and done. That I'm was done. awesome. <laughs> no, I am gonna take this model though, and I've copied it to a new file here so that I can draw it along the axis instead of uh, however it's oriented uh, in reality. So let's build this base with um, some more segments. And let's create the basic model. And then what we'll do today is kind of just go in and pick out as many of the details as we can and uh, see what happens. I, I'm not sure. Um, I do want to ask, because I, I like to say, we're doing this because our, our home team is in the uh, playoffs. And the huge reason why we are is one player uh, who is from Serbia, I believe. So if anybody is joining us from Serbia, I want to give them a special shout out. Just in case. That's thank you. Uh, for yeah, your, thanks a uh, lot. If there's yeah, if, is there anybody from Serbia or near Serbia around here? Nobody says it yet. Nobody's even mentioned the word basketball yet. So I think they're just here <laughs> for the sketchup. Yeah, that's that's fair. All right, so um, I think the way we'll do this is this middle section we'll treat as uh, as straight, and then each of these will be a half, a full half curve, and we'll just add in a bunch of segments and see what that leaves us and go from there. Um, so let's... Uh, so I'm going to just go off on a tangent here because somebody on LinkedIn... Uh, Megan on LinkedIn asked what why it was called Ball Arena, and mm -hmm. I just immediately opened my stupid mouth and said, "I bet it's Ball Aerospace." And then I went and looked it up, and it's not. You know who it is? I only know of one other Ball Corporation. And so people make canning supplies, like mason jars. Yeah, yeah. That's not what I expected. I didn't know. That's... I didn't know there was so much money in canning products that they could buy a. An entire uh, sports arena. I mean, is that all they? Surely they do more than that. Whenever I looked it up, it just says best known for their glass jars, lids, and related canning products. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. I don't like. I don't. I don't like that corporations buy arenas and put their name on them. Now I must be. They must make me a grumpy old man. Oh dear. We have. We have uh, triggered the grumpy old man and Jody already. And we're only <laughs> 10 minutes in. <laughs> it's the clouds. That's what it is. <laughs> um, okay, so 
I, I don't know. I, I'm trusting. We'll just trust that this model is fairly accurate. I obviously don't know real dimensions, but it seems close enough for what we're going to do. So that's going to do that. And then we're going to draw an arc and make it a half circle. And then like I say, we'll turn up the segment count. Um, that's, I, I'd be curious if anybody wants to chime in on, you know, a, a different approach to this. And, and obviously it would matter, like if you needed a highly accurate, you, you'd go and, and take, I don't know, go do some laser scans and stuff like that. Um, or find some of the original documents and we're just kind of using this as a modeling exercise. But yeah, I, you know, when you're dealing with uh, curves on buildings like this and uh, let's see, how many, how many should we have? We've got uh, 12 by default. Let's, um, I'm just going to turn that Aaron's up to a bunch. Like I know you're 16. not Aaron and I don't want to, I don't want to pre pretend that you are, but Aaron really likes his 24 sided circles because they're divisible nope. by four and eight and three. That is all true. Yeah, four and three. That's all a valid point. Um, that's not going to be a, as relevant here. That's fair. That's fair. Fine. Also 60 is still divisible by three and four. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna go with sixty, and um, so, and we'll see if you that know, comes back to bite us. It's it's funny to me to think of like whenever I see someone pumping up the numbers uh, for number of segments in an arc, and I think back to whenever I started using SketchUp, we're You'd always hear people wanting to get it to look as as real, as circular as possible, and just cranking that number up, like to a hundred and beyond. And the the rule was always, oh, you no, so like a hundred if you're feeling crazy, but don't you just don't <laughs> you just don't want to pump your numbers that higher? It's going to run like it's going to completely run like uh, a dead horse. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going right. With this. And at this scale, I mean, these segments are going to be a couple feet across each, you know, nine feet. Yeah, so it's a lot, but yeah, you, you're just like, no, not necessary to, to really pump it up that much. Okay, so that's our basic one. I think we'll use follow me on the top there to create this dome. And uh, over here, let's do a little, I wonder if we can close this face. I have no idea. Hey, thank you, whoever okay. modeled this originally. So we're going to say this comes out roughly 30 feet and I'm going to be taking a guess here. Now I say we're not, it'd be nice if we had just the massing of this thing. Um, but if I go there, I might like spend the next half hour trying to get it right. It bugs me when I, when it's not, you know, when it doesn't look close, it just bugs me, but I've got to not be that <laughs> guy right now. <laughs> you and Aaron are not cut from the same cloth. There is a cloth <laughs> for this type of SketchUp modeler and a cloth for that type. And you guys are each from those different cloths. Clothes. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with that. Both good. Both good. Both. Gooder at different times. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna say, let's say this one is gonna be our our version, and then back here, Um, this little thing right here, when you're pulling up surfaces and we can reverse these faces, but just as a tip, if you tap the modifier to leave a copy in place, so right, I pull this up, it's a reverse blue face. For me, it's option on a PC, it'll be control. Um, it will 
leave that surface and it will let you pull up uh, and not need to reverse that later. So that's just a little tip. And I want this to be exact and I'm close. So I'm gonna make this 114 feet. And so you're just using measurements based on someone else hoping that they did. You didn't find the, uh, the specs for this building or anything anywhere. I did not. And so this is the one that was modeled for Google Earth. The truth is I, I've got um, I've got Earth pulled up and you can do measurements on Earth. Um, but, you know, so I could measure, say, from here to here, and it measures roughly 122 feet. And that doesn't, that, it's, it's in a similar scale, but there, there, there's a little bit difference here. So again, I, I'm just not worrying about what that is exactly. Um, if we had more information, we could, could dial that in a lot, but. We're not going to. There is, when we look at this, um, if I turn perspective off, I think this is true in real life. It's kind of like this triangle and this straight edge here, and then this curve that comes out of it. Um, it must be an interesting thing, the whole notion of designing uh, sports arenas and that sort of thing, where you, you start with the field, and then you go Builder outward to the seats. Yeah. And then you're like, and then all the amenities and other things that go on there. And these days, of course, Jody and I were talking about, um, you know, we're, we, we don't necessarily go and watch sports there, but you've seen, you've seen a concert here, right? What, what did you go watch here? Uh, I saw you two there. What? Like, yeah. When was that? I'm trying to remember if I saw someone else. Um, I don't know, like almost 20 years ago. That's awesome. It seemed we tend we tend to favor Red Rocks as as a venue. Maybe you should yeah, model that. That's fair. It's, there's nothing oh. there. It's just out that outside. <laughs> I'd model a whole bunch of seats. I don't want to model <laughs> yeah. the rocks. That would be awesome, but I don't want to do it. So Randy is in early with the save. As I'm staring at that untitled, uh, I completely get why he uh, why he feels that way. All right, that's a that's a good point, Randy. Thank you. I'm I'm gonna do that as soon as I. This was. I don't want to lose my train of thought. I'm gonna risk losing the model so I don't lose my train of thought. One thirty-five feet. Colin said he saw Roger Waters and Cirque du Soleil uh, at the Pepsi Center at Ball the Ball Arena last year. And I'm just thinking what kind of concert that would be with Roger Waters and Cirque du Soleil. That would be very uh, artistic. I know, I know. He's not, he didn't go to both at the same time. You know who Roger I, Waters is? I don't. Enlighten us. Oh, Enlighten me and maybe the, some of us. He was the front man for Pink Floyd, I think, right? Right? I'm not wrong. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure I'm right. This sounds legit. Oh, I didn't realize he was kicked out, though. Oh, he's a bassist for Pink Floyd. What? I'm sure Colin can enlighten me with even more. I didn't know he was doing enough to uh, to have his own, to be manning his own, running his own shows. Hmm. I shut you up. Did your mic die? No, you didn't shut me up. I, I was letting you talk about that while I figure out what I want to do with um, this little glass, you know, elevator or stairs or something. I, I realized yeah. I was basing this other piece off of this measurement and it was a little bit uh, uh, wrong. I didn't have that yet. That's all. I feel like not to, uh, not to demean working on this particular arena. Uh, Bright also wants to know how you make those dotted lines appear, by the by. Uh, these. I'll I'll you talk. Finish your thought and then I'll, I'll uh, tell you. Um, the football stadium. I don't know what it's called, so I'm just going to call it Bronco Stadium or whatever, which looks like it's got this big roller coaster going around the edges of it. It's an out, you know, it's an outdoor, so it would be considerably more 
uh, there are a lot more details to model. Like, I don't know if that could be done in two hours. You might do it if you're Aaron and you just like to like to flounder, but uh, noodle around. Um, you heard it here. Uh, we have volunteered Aaron to model the, I believe, I could be wrong. I think it's called the Mile High Stadium. It is. That is right. You are correct. Um, Thank you for that. I guess we love to oh, bring wait. teams up here and suffocate them with our non-oxygen air. Uh, if this is, so I think it is now called Empower Field at Mile High. And the reason I know that is because after I looked up Ball Arena, there's a little link to view a map. And so then I just click that. And now I get to see all of the everything's in that general vicinity. So yeah, Empower Field at Mile Empower High. Empower Field. Yeah. Boom. And since we're going to talk about everything having weird names uh, now, we, so next Tuesday, Amy and I, oh, my wife and I are going to see The Cure at what was once Fiddler's Green, and I don't know what it's called now. And I can't That's find awesome. that one. The what Cure is, is still touring. How cool is that? They like just released a new album last year. So yeah, not only are they, it's not like a, we're milking milking this into our golden years. This is a, they're a, we're still an active band. That's sweet. That sounds fun. Um, at Fiddler. What was Fiddler's Green, huh? Not, not the old Red Rocks. I'm taking a moment. I, I, I want I want to try and sort of like get this triangle established. Um, I think this length is right. This this uh, is the entrance, and it does this weird. I, I I'm going to say weird, but I, I do think it's pretty uh, interesting. It actually, like, if you see here. These are straight, but the entrance leans forward at some point and, and comes out from the arena at some angle that I don't know. So. Uh, just, just to finish my thought on that, uh, yeah. Fiddler's Green, uh, Green Arena, I can't, I can't say this without laughing. Um, is now called for dental amphitheater the for dental comfort dental no <laughs> i liked for dental better it's <laughs> it's a dental okay let me just scroll back to whenever i was complaining about corporations or businesses owning <laughs> these places. oh good oh good you know what? Let me let me uh, not forget. Question came up: How do we display these lines? These are hidden edges, and it's one of your edge styles up here. Um, I have it on a keyboard shortcut, and I apologize. I don't have um, uh, a, a keyboard logger up here, but all my keyboard shortcuts are are weirdly unique anyway. So. I, uh, anyway, so I'm turning hidden line. If you can go to view hidden geometry and hidden objects, and I've got uh, hidden geometry toggled to a keyboard shortcut, which I use frequently when I'm using arcs and circles because I, I like seeing where my segments are. So, so yeah, I, I'll be turning that on and off frequently. But that's so to that question that came up earlier, lest we forget, that's what that is. <laughs> um, Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna just make up wherever this comes to back here so that we can keep moving forward. So let's say it's right about there. And this one is roughly roughly 70 feet and About 15 or 16 degrees. So, so I like whole numbers. What are we, 15 or 16? 
15. Yeah, those are both real what, numbers. What did I say? 70 feet? That's what the, those are the words you used. Yeah. Uh, so if we. I, uh, I should draw that line down. Seventy, seventy-four or forty-seven. Chip said. <laughs> I think you can... one of those two. One of those two. Is there? Friend... I wonder if there is like a. There's a name for like dyslexia of like the words you hear. Like, is it still? Can you can you hear and say things flipped like dys dyslexia, or is it only written? Is it only an I thing? So you're gonna say something. Oh, I don't know. I was just gonna call out our friend Chip Cookie, who. Oh. Always yeah. makes me want to have cookies. Exactly. Every time. <laughs> Which you I guess, you know, some. thanks for that. And also, darn it. I got to close this tab. I have this tab just sitting there staring at me that says Fiddler screen is now comfort dental <laughs> oh. Oh. oh that's great that is great. <laughs> <laughs> oh but let's go back to the part where you're going to watch the cure and that's awesome so the comments that we're kind of starting to pick up as after that was um that it kind of makes us feel old because like people are hearing the cure as as muzak now studio r2 cool rt cool said yeah he was actually in a store and heard the muzak playing he's like wait is that the cure and then everybody realized that we're just old and the music we like is now muzak worthy <laughs> amy actually amy ran into this the other day at the grocery store i don't remember what song came up but she's like they were playing such and such like raging against the machine it Safeway, or, you know, something like that. I mean, bad example. I don't, I don't imagine that'll ever make it into. But you get what you get. What I'm saying. I, I hear what you're putting down. Pick it up. Picking up what you're putting down. Yeah. Number ten. Roughly there. Do you know anything about like when was this? built for pepsi or did, did this used to be called something else uh the little bit i found out about it uh i think this was built in the 70s early 70s perhaps uh it replaced another long-standing arena um and it was built by friends of ours uh mortensen construction that they didn't design it i, I think um but they were primary uh, construction company on it and Mortensen is, I say that because they've got a, a large office here in Denver and we've been down there since they're fans of SketchUp. So shout out to our friends in Mortensen. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to call you a liar. Okay. The thing I've pulled up said it was built in 97 and opened in 99. No, really? Wow. I was way off if that's the case. Oh well. Um, but yeah, I hate to correct you and in, in, on in front of everybody like this. I don't mind correcting you when there's nobody around. I'll do that all day long. <laughs> no, let's get yeah. You you don't mind, so let's, let's we we're 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 square on that front. <laughs> so Raisa just joined from India. She said it is twelve a.m. there. Oh wow! It's it's, it's already tomorrow. And it's probably not um, sunny and hot, like everybody else. Yeah. But welcome all the way from India. That's uh, very, uh, what's so, the right word? Generous, very thoughtful, very something of you to join us from all the way uh, over there. I'm gonna, awesome. Course, I'm going to go with awesome. Awesome. It is awesome. Um, okay. 
We are. Well, we are 97 feet. Let's make that. Yeah, sure. I wonder why they did that. Why that extra little jag over there is slightly lower than the higher one and slightly higher than the lower one. Like, they just need to have uh, varied roof heights to make this thing oh, proper. Oh, right? Custom. Like, it, just some interest thing. Um, we look up here, like I, I would, I would have thought, oh, maybe it's because they're using this as a balcony or something, but no, they're not They're Um, none of this, this just has a bunch of equipment on it. So this, yep. I don't know which came first, you know, this road, all this stuff maybe came in and was built in response to this, or was this built in response to the road? I don't know. Keggy suggested that the architect was paid by the angle and the curve, which uh, does not sound, that sounds, it sounds made up and it also sounds like it could be true. Sort of like lawyers always bill by the hour or the minute or whatever, and architects are billed by the roof line. Okay, well, let's pop the top on here and start adding some details. So that we have something to look at by the time we're done here. Patrick just arrived from the UK. It's sunny there as well. It's sunny everywhere. That's why We've it's all cloudy here. For you, all the cloudy places have our uh, have our sun. Yep. But now we can start. They repeated UK. Did I not say UK? If I didn't say UK, I meant to say UK. I think you did. Let's uh all right, let's draw our center. That is Oh my goodness. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're gonna go we're going back to the original, I thought it was Ball Aerospace this was named after, but it turned out it was Ball Corporation. But actually, Ball Corporation owns Ball Aerospace. What the? <laughs> what the so, what? This is confusing me. The company's 134 oh, years old. Nice. And if basically anything to do with metal, they seem to have done that turned into spaceships. That's crazy. It's crazy. He's crazy. Um, Peter is Peter is enlightening us with more and more information here. Thank Thanks, you. Peter Molinar. Uh, do do let us know. I mean, clearly Jody and I here know what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only as smart as Google. Wait, I'm only smart until Google tells me otherwise. Yeah, I think that's right. That's okay. <laughs> Chip said ball company bounces around. <laughs> but um there we go. And I need I need a soundboard. And then he's wondering if, the, if, the, lid is, if the roof is actually a canning lid. Could be. Wow. Wait, do that again. That went so smoothly. Uh we've got our roof. We've got our profile. Let's do a little follow me. And boom, boom. Um, doesn't have this, but a little uh, quick little intersect with model will be all right. So, we will quickly get rid of those. All right, roof, done. That roof looks so much better than the Google Earth roof. Take that, Google Earth roof. It's like you guys are all machine generated. No, probably not, but. <laughs> this uh, little artifact does make me wonder 
if, uh, if you can make it better a surface in there yeah what's going on i've seen a little zed fighting there is some zed fighting for sure uh but that's from the two surfaces below and seriously Yes, it's just, huh. well, all right. I'm not going to get caught on it. But, uh, oops. You think you're not, but you are right now. I know, I know. I'm just trying to fill it back in. Make sure. It could be the case. Uh, let's try. Everybody is uh, is kind of marveling at your, your follow me. Like that went... Uh, I'll be honest, if, if Aaron was modeling that, it would have screwed up twice before he got it right. So, in fact, you just did it and it just worked so fluidly. And you did it without really even talking about what the hell you're doing. So everybody's just like, Tyson's oh. magical. I'll do it again. Which, which I, I won't mean, disagree that you are magical, but not for this. I, no, not for this. I mean, follow me gets all the credit, not me. I just, you know, want to take the credit, but but I'll do it again if you want. So, it, so talk through, like, how did you pick, create that profile that you used to follow the path? Like, you just kind of did it, and I didn't even notice you were doing it. Keggy, Keggy, always here to 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 keep you down. Said, uh, oh. it could be it could be a little more rounded, and he's right. <laughs> always calling me out okay okay we'll do this again um i'm gonna move this 500 feet a thousand feet and we'll remember um here i remember i need to find the center of this uh whole thing so i'm using my arc to find the center here and i'll draw a line back to here and then draw it up. Now, I remember that this was roughly 25, 26 feet. So um, based on the, the sort of shallow roof we had. So that's my starting said, point. I mean, you said back to here, you're using the midpoint inference, the cyan dot on that line over there. Indeed I was. Just drawing a line, locking it in the green direction and using referencing that midpoint. Because inference locking is, it's my jam. Man, I love inference locking. Every other program I ever used, I'm like, why don't you oh. have better inference locking? Yeah. Patrick said you had some follow me tips from a few days back. Did you publish a video this week? Uh, I did publish a video this week. The follow me video, I think, was from last week or the one before. So, okay. Uh, thank you. But still, yes. recently, I'm going to go recently. find that thing. I didn't, I, I, you know, I didn't know how far this overhang was. I just, I'm moving this up 12 inches and then running this back. One of the tips for follow me, it, that's, I, I always draw a rectangle before I draw my profile. I just would rather do that than try and draw an open space. You can, but it's so much easier. So that's that's our profile and if we want to you know make this a gentle arc or something we could i'm not gonna do that now i do think i'm gonna move this forward this point here so i'm gonna lock that and move it forward to meet up here i think that'll make our profile clean so anyway i'll move that up straight up in the blue axis. I'm going to copy this surface and then paste in place. You, I did show in that video that there are ways to reference inside and outside of a group for follow me, but I find that gets a little finicky and I would rather just have this as my follow me path. Hit follow me and there's our all right. 
what gets no. me is that you've got that that flat section in the middle, and I just my brain expects it to work differently. How so? What do you mean? I don't know. I just figure in the middle spot, I was going to try and create some sort of. I I don't know. That's just the problem. <laughs> If I was watching you do I'm gonna be like, that's not gonna work. Mm. So it, it it might be the case. Um I think sometimes you would try and create it, the profile here because that way you'd be starting on a straight a, a perpendicular run for this shape as opposed to starting somewhere on the curve. But I was pretty confident that this would just work. So and it did. We're okay. Anyway, uh select. Triple click, select this all, right click and intersect the faces with model so that we can clean this up a little bit. I'm gonna turn hidden geometry off because that way I can use the eraser tool on this surface. Eraser tool won't work on surfaces, just on edges. So I can go through and clean up these edges and then turn hidden, uh, or I'm sorry, turn x-ray mode on and Double check that, yep, there's a few other edges to clean up. Nice. This is a real gem. It is so convenient that you just made your follow me tool so that now as people are saying, I, I need more information, then I can just be like, go check out the video. In fact, I'm saying that right now. Pat and uh, and Brad already commented that it was, really, it was a really good video. Oh, thank and you. Navi said you need to just talk more slowly because... They're not, not able to keep up. But I'll I, say... Uh, that's fair. You say it. You say it. Oh, what? No, I... Uh, call out any questions you have at any time. Sometimes, because we do this every week, um, we tend to get out of the mode of, like, explaining everything we're doing along the way. But if, you know, we have we have some old-timers here. And they can just come along for the ride. If if you have questions along the way, that's a big part of why we do this. So please chime in and I will uh, pause what we're doing. And, you know, sometimes I just get in the zone and want to keep moving forward. But by all means, please. Would, well, love to and it's just a nice questions. thing about, that's why I'm saying it's nice that you just made the video because then I can just throw a link up and be like, this goes much slower and digs into the hows and whys of how it works. Yeah. So nice. Brandon's um, wondering if if you could have done the same thing with the soap skin and bubble extension. You you definitely could do something similar uh, with that. Um, if you had soap skin bubble, you would have that uh, oval outline essentially, and then you would create the line basically across the middle, for example. I think that's how you would set that up. Um, the way this roof is, I, I think that uh, Follow Me is probably the, your, your easiest and generally best option. It does look like this roof is peaked up here in the, in the middle. Uh, but like I say, yeah, always five ways to do this similar thing. Yeah. So soap skin might be overkill for the simplicity of that roof. Yeah. Man, didn't you get enough of soap skin when I did the bridge and I like took <laughs> three hours to set up that soap skin operation? Yowzas. Maybe maybe for your next video you could do uh DIA. Because I bet oh you could use soap skin on that. Yes you could. That would be an excellent example. For those of you who don't know, DIA is Denver International Airport, and it is built with, um, what's the term? I mean, it's it's basically, Tensile they're like. membrane structure yeah. is the actual term. <laughs> That's a fancy way of saying the roof looks like it's Tense. several Indian teepees. It is, it is, it, it's made of, uh, you know, like a very fabric that's that's peaked out and and stretched and it's pretty dynamic and yeah uh i'm not doing that <laughs> but thanks nice try um let's uh let's see here what we're gonna 
let's look at let's try and get a little bit of this glass facade in and then we'll come back to this curve back here and get some of these pillars in um Let's see here. Like I say, this thing slants away and I don't know if it slants all the way down. Uh, we're just, and it looks like it's about halfway. We've got some of these pillars and some other things here. I think I had a, yeah, this image shows it even a little better. It's obviously oh, yeah. very- I wouldn't have thought it was, I wouldn't have thought it was slanting until you posted that second image. Yeah, it, it does. And it's a beautiful, you know, big glass at night, obviously lights up. I think they, uh, they've they got multicolored LEDs that, that they can shoot up a bunch of these pillars and light it up different colors. So pretty cool. Um, what are we going to do? What are we going to do that? If we look here, we've got... Um, this steps back a little bit, but then this comes forward. So let's just take our best guess. So, um, and nobody, I, I know we have such a gracious audience. Nobody's gonna hold me to it. I could make this uh, straight and, but let's just see if we can make this slanted and uh, may cause more trouble than, than it's worth. But that's what we're, that's what we're here to do, cause trouble. Working. So you mentioned old timers, and so then several <laughs> people went, or chimed in that they that they were all old timers. So now I'm curious how old of an old timer everyone is. Like, what version was your first version of SketchUp? Mine was 3.1. What about um, you? I started using it at 2. Point something, but Jody yeah. started at SketchUp a month before I did. So, like, if we're, you know, throwing that out. Yeah, suck it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's an interesting question. Chime in. When did you, uh, what version of SketchUp did you start in at? We're going to make this a three degree slant just for kicks and giggles. And because that just happens to work with what I've got here. And I'm going to draw this surface in manually. So, yeah, I, I started at two something and um, I was still in architecture school. And I remember that <laughs> we had a class where 3D, the like 3D in AutoCAD had just, just uh, come out and it was, pretty technical to use. And we had a professor who was trying to teach us how to do it. And it took him almost all of a class period to create an array, not to, you know, create one, but to teach us how to create an array. And I was like, I can do that in SketchUp in five seconds. <laughs> uh, I wasn't it's compelled to use it's um, it's funny to think of like like what some of some of the um the office challenges were like everybody used to always ask for onion domes so figuring out a way to model an onion dome was really hard until follow me heck people would be making spheres and that was that was a chore until yes and then follow me like completely oversimplified it follow me came along in version four and at that point I was working for SketchUp. And um, we would we would go out and we would do kind of um, it wasn't it wasn't hugely well known back then right SketchUp was still a pretty new thing 
And so we would do these demos in these cities where we'd host like, hey, come come watch us, uh, come you know, see what SketchUp's all about and we'll host a dinner and something like this. And showing people follow me. Oh, so cool back then. It was like push pull. I'll, actually, push pull was mind blowing for people on up yeah, into even Google days, I think. Yeah. So uh, what's what's the word out there? Are, are people uh, where? There is there is quite the range. We started started with a 2017. It's very and then. Uh, t -t -t I don't Welcome. think Patrick officially said what his was. 2007. I'm trying to remember what years. A lot of people are remembering the year that they started, not necessarily the version. So that's fair. Colin started doing eight hour trials with a version three and then version four. Finally bought it for bought it with version five. You know, it was version three when we came out with the Mac version. Oh, good question. And also Ruby scripts. Was that that was four? We got follow me and Ruby scripts at the same time. Did we introduce Ruby at that time? Sounds I th about right. I think we did. Because when we got SketchUp six was was Google era, right? Or was that seven? Six was Google. Okay. So we had six and then we got acquired, and then shortly after we got acquired, we basically made a free version of six. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you and we were acquired by Google in 2006. So, I guess we're pretty close to a version a year. That's kind of kind of crazy. I don't, it was never intentional that SketchUp 4 was 2004 and SketchUp 5 was. 2005, but I think we were on like an 18 month development cycle or something like that, right? Yeah, roughly that. Until SketchUp 8, and then it took like 17 years to finish that. <laughs> Congratulations, by the way, Jody. Uh, you last month just celebrated uh, yeah. 18 years. Yeah, I don't, I go back and forth on how, if it's a badge of honor to work at the same place for 19 years or, or not. That's definitely nice that I didn't have to go looking for another job anytime in that, but. That's very much true. Now, I'm, now I got to look, I'm pretty sure that we added, maybe we added it in five. Five was when the marketing campaign was the, the coffee stained. Yep. Book, right? Yep. <laughs> Getting lost on this little corner piece here. But we're just yammering about the good old days. Whatever whatever that means, the old days. So I'm just sort of All right, cuz some people have been using it since 2017 and that's I think that's still a legitimate old timer. I don't I don't think that uh yeah, That's anything that. No, not at all. Do maybe maybe they say on Wikipedia. Who knows? I don't know. Uh, the coffee stain was fun. It's fun to, to like, even if we can't remember fully like versions of, of SketchUp, there's the SketchUp logo, or nay, even I could say the, the version of SketchUp socks associated with a version of SketchUp. Yeah, I uh, I think this, I, I'm disappointed that, that we don't have, you know, or when we do make make socks, they don't say it doesn't stink anymore. So that was one oh, of the uh, yeah. That was like, one of my favorite things about those socks. That was definitely Wikipedia confirmed Ruby was added in SketchUp 4. Good memory. 
So that was a pretty big, I think that's a pretty big shift. Because we got follow me and we got Ruby. Now I just want to see a list of what was added with each version. But I don't think I'm going to find that. I don't feel optimistic. <laughs> um, oh, man, that would be hard. One of the things that, like, going way back in version 2, I don't remember if it was version 2 to 3, but early on, this whole hidden line, every there there were no hidden edges, so every segment was was visible Ooh. yeah and i don't so, like it no that was one thing that was added and i think the scale tool uh added back then i mean early versions were just a couple of surf you know draw, drawing tools to create surfaces and push pull and the move and the line tool select eraser Stuff like that, but um, version four was significant. Yeah, version five. When is that when we added sandbox, or did that come at version six? Uh, I think that was in five, and it was during five is when we had our first base camp, right? And that's when we announced layout. And now I don't remember. Oh, see, that's the problem with working for nineteen years is. Here, and here's the funny thing is I know how long I've worked here because it maps directly to my daughter's age. Yeah. <laughs> my my SketchUp my SketchUp employee is exactly one Ava unit. Ava being my daughter. <laughs> yep. And although I relate to that, I'm sure when you bring it up, Ava, it's like, oh God. <laughs> ah, teenagers. <laughs> Studio RT Cool said he started, or he has a 2.1 CD. I don't know what happened to all my CDs. I had I had a collection for a while. I think Bryce, did, was it Bryce, Bryce was collecting has, all the CDs? I think he does. I think Bryce has all the CDs. We stopped making those. All right, I keep going off and trying to look things up on the internet, and I'm not even seeing all these great comments in here. What's, uh, what's the uh, comment session thrown out? So Lawrence's first version was, he went and found a file that was saved in SketchUp 6. So Ooh. that's more impressive than when you nice. started is the fact that you still have a file from yeah. that long ago. I don't know if you're like me, but you have old computers with stuff on the hard drive and then you stop using that computer. And so the com that computer's off in the corner and it has files on there that you know, didn't get backed up or they're going to be backed up someday. But realistically, if I ever, first of all, if I find a monitor with the right type of plug so I could even see what's on that computer, I'll find all these files that I haven't seen in forever. I remember uh, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, I would literally, if I got a new computer, I'd have to back up my Outlook Express file <laughs> with all of my, ugh. and you could burn it to a CD and, and it would all fit. Uh-huh. This So Brad uh, said he used he used SketchUp in twenty two thousand ten to redesign his seven hundred square foot wraparound deck. Holy crap, crap, that is a huge deck. Uh but he used layout for the plans and everything to go through building approvals 2010 is when i use sketchup to design my timber frame shop which isn't 700 right. square feet my shop full of tools is smaller than his deck but that's okay nobody's counting <laughs> awesome oh that's funny transom said he met dave r at a woodworking show in 2009 ish I saw a live demo. And now I'm just picturing Dave sitting at a sitting in a computer woodworker mm -hmm. style. Uh, 
Have you, you haven't, you haven't built anything that needed like permitting or approvals, have you? So you haven't used layout for that? I didn't use it when I, I did build a deck that, um, that needed permits. Uh, I didn't end up using layout. That was, no, I probably did, but it was 15 years ago. So layout would have been very early. Um, ah, the good old days. But it was also like, you know, all of three three pages that needed to be done. It was it was very simple. Not like your shop. Trying to get, let's see, there's four pillars in here. This um, this slanted wall, as anticipated, is causing <laughs> all sorts of grief. Um, Funny, as as you say that, I just hear Andre the Giants. I realize why, realize why you're giving me such trouble. <laughs> uh, I didn't expect you'd give me this much trouble. <laughs> it might be time to rewatch that movie. I'm it's assuming everybody here time. is a yeah. I'm assuming everybody here is a huge fan of uh, Princess Bride. Let us hope so. And if you are not, don't tell. Don't come, don't, don't tell, say it. But also, <laughs> go watch it and enjoy and and be happy. <laughs> my i'm not claiming that i'm that big um but since i was by the time i was mid-teenager i was certainly the largest one in my family and i was still got up you know past six foot two or so so my dad would sometimes if we were walking somewhere he's like nudge me clear this out and he's referring to andre everybody Move! <laughs> you did a really good job of not just bellowing that into the microphone because I feel like I would definitely say that too loud. <laughs> hey, you know what? Nobody's got. Hey, we didn't have audio issues today. I mean, it seems <laughs> it's good that you waited an hour into this before commenting. Wow. It's also that. been about an hour since you saved, right? Oh, I've been saving. But I will save right now. Peter, Peter spotted that, but since we don't since we don't see your shortcuts, we have no idea when you're hitting that. The yep. We don't even know. Tiniest little this <laughs> this stupid wall. See how close it is to that red axis, and it's just barely off. And it means oh. when you're dealing with that, you have to draw all your surfaces manually and be very careful. Um, but I think something like that is close ish. I think um, as long as you're not inferring off of it, it should be fine. Yeah. Well, That's when it bites gonna... me in the butt is I infer and then an hour later it's just all it's just kidding. I don't I don't ever work on a project for more than an hour. <laughs> but if I did, an hour later I would be like, Oh I wait and I do I make those mistakes with real materials. I don't do it virtually. That way I can curse myself and go to Home Depot to buy another batch of boards. Relate to this too. Uh, we're going to, just to make it more interesting, totally add some stuff that is bogus as far as like the actual scale or anything like that. But we're just going to do you know 
add in some interest back here. So we'll make that. Just adding in some millions for interest. Copy that up and then say something like, it's fine. Um, let me see if I can make this, if I can select the right pieces, then we will, uh, make this a cutting component and risk popping it down. And I think, ah, oh, I selected too much. Oh, uh, why must you click so much? Why did I get click crazy? I think cutting components is one of those things that uh, Aaron doesn't do that much because he rightly has kind of a fear of them. They are finicky. I think if you you say cutting comp oh yeah, it's a uh, it's curious yeah that he never really does. But I mean, a lot of stuff that he does, he doesn't get that fine of detail. True too. But maybe he could if he would just use cutting components. Please tell me that you did a video last week about oh man components of cut planes. Uh, I am sorry I did not, but I will oh. uh, at least explain what we're doing here. I'm I have to make each of these unique because this this uh is not the right size. But if done correctly, and I will overemphasize this for now, I'll pull that <laughs> way back. If I did this correctly, I can copy this, copy this, and it will cut that next opening. And I think, how many of these do we have? Yeah, eight. So this is another one of those things that early on, uh, it was so fun to demo because, you know, just a lot of uh, satisfaction. Um, when you're making a cutting component, here we'll do a, we'll do a quick cutting component little uh, lesson for anyone who has not done those, unless unless it's like unless this is nope too late we're doing it. Chime in and right. say no. Here's how you do them. Here's the basics of it. Let me look at a little hidden geometry here. When you do a cutting component, what's important is that you select the edges here that are both shared between the opening you're going to cut and the surface. Um, so if I select this, that selects all those edges that are shared and the piece inside it. And if I look at my hidden geometry, I can be sure that nothing back there is selected. If I make this a component, it should by default say cut opening because it detects that it that that's an option. Now I can turn that off, obviously. But if I create this, then I, I've got to be careful about which surface I, I paste this on. But if I copy this, then say come up here and paste it here, it will cut an opening. Paste it back here, or I can array it down. Now you can't cut multiple openings, right? So this is this is like a facade, and if this wall had thickness, then you have to kind of get creative by creating two cutting things that meet. It's 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 mostly for mass modeling and simplified things, but as long as you just make sure that you have the correct selection, then they're pretty easy to create. <laughs> he says this, he deletes his whole model. I know. <laughs> pretty easy. <laughs> so in this case, the the because I've got like all these other edges here, 
I can't just do like a full on selection. I, then I'd have to deselect. So for me, I think it's just easier to use the modifier key to double click on each of these surfaces with the add modifier. So I'm clicking a surface and selecting its edges and that will select all the bounding edges, all the pieces I need, then I can make that take a moment. Cut opening. Yeah. And what do we say, eight times? So a yeah, little, uh, little side note on cutting components. As long as you uh, keep that, keep those um, outside edges preserved. Again, it's 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 that outer um, edges that that are shared between the surface you're cutting and the and that creates your component. As long as you preserve that, you can continue to like do some different stuff in here. So we could come in. Offset this. Oops. And at, at this point, this is not at all reflective of what's happening in the uh, full arena. We're just getting a little goofy with how, you know, the power of components. So uh, I hope that made sense. The power of components if compels you. We're gonna step away from that, but I haven't done. I I've meant to. It's it's on my sort of like wish list of I need to do a skill builder on cutting components because we don't have anything on it yet in um, campus. So yeah, we need to need to have a bit more information on it. You got my vote. Excellent. Jody's vote is all is the only one I care about, everybody. So it's going to happen now. Nice. That is on the, I believe, correct plane. That surface that I just copied for us to just make a nice little overhang and And now we're really making stuff up. I mean, but that's how that's that's how we operate here, isn't it? So making stuff that's up. That's part of the course. Yeah. Making stuff up. Yeah, I like I don't even watch what you're doing. I just sort of talk and then every so often chime in and hope that whatever I'm talking about aligns with whatever you just did. Mm -hmm. I think if we take this guy. Align it with this. We could move it up to here. And and do the you know there's something like this up here, some sort of overhang. And I think it's aligned differently than I have it, but we are going to pretend like this is how it is. Anyway, pull that back so it looks like it's attached. Let's pivot over here. We're uh, we're over an hour in, and. Um, if nothing else, let's get these columns on this arc curve and, and you know, I, I had no idea how far we'd get today because I say came in unprepared, so good times. You're looking. Just said we're gonna it's do really, that. You do a really good job of of faking it. <laughs> I 
copy that up and let's say five divided. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I just, um, as a quick detail, again, some of, some of this can make it look like we did more work than we have. If we add just a little bit of like, okay, let's copy this down. You know, and now we've got some lines over there. The, uh, illusion of detail. Okay. So what is, what are these things even look like? Um, this is when we started way, way back an hour ago, <laughs> we were talking about the, the number of segments in a curve and how ideally you would work with the number of segments. I made this curve 60 and I did that because I had come in here previously and counted and there are 20 of these columns. So we could hopefully make that work nice and easily. Uh, every third segment. We shall see. So, I'm going to copy this and let's, let's again, six, Pretend like we're going to be able to put a pillar in the middle of every third. You know, so that one, that one, etc. So I'm going to copy this first one, close that out, paste it back in place, and build our column off of this. Now, I'm going to rotate this back into uh, the axis while I'm building it. Well, you know what I'll do? Let's just make it a component from here. I am trying to get better about naming my components, but it doesn't mean I'm better at like giving them meaningful names. Ah, that part. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> I'm just impressed. Well, uh, I don't know if I'm impressed. It's curious to be watching a Tyson model without a graveyard. I'm about to, I'm about to put one in. <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> I mean, I guess maybe looking at that old model off to the side probably counts. Oh yeah, that's true. It does, huh? I want to model this pillar along uh, a, an axis. So. I can use regular tools, regular old drawing tools. And then, um, so we'll model this one. I know, and I, I, I want to, in response to that, be like, oh, I, not that I need to, but like, I'll get rid of my graveyard, but I can't. I still have it. I need it as a reference over here. So, nope. Let's, let's, let's start in on the graveyard. We're gonna do this. I don't. I don't. I think. I don't think I've ever seen anyone talk ill of your graveyard. <laughs> Which is well and good because that's just how it's gonna go. All right. Um, we need to rotate this, and we've still got this nice curve. So somewhere over here, if I turn on in. I should be able to access, there it is, that piece and toggle this back off. So we want to rotate this third one, two, I think there and 19 of those gets us. That looks like it's gonna work. So now, what do those actually look like? Uh, huh. Let's find a good picture. Uh, 
So yeah, I called it a graveyard, I think, but Brad's right. It's, I think I've, I've heard you call it or someone else call it a boneyard and that does feel, that feels funner. <laughs> the boneyard. I think uh, Google Maps might be our, our best friend here. Give us a better reference than all right, so it's got this wide base, thinner base, and it comes down to this sort of foot of a sort. Let's do something like that. Looking good. You can tell we're getting late in the show because Lawrence has started dropping the uh, dropping the jokes. Peter's even getting on it now. Uh, any good jokes? Lawrence, well, right. Lawrence commented that when they changed the name from the Pepsi Center, they really dropped the ball on this one. <laughs> Peter was just making the joke, but pointing out that you're you're taking creative license and using a literature a litter. A literature term. In uh, in what way? I'm I'm not following that one. Uh, he commented a little while ago. I think you were doing something with, without knowing what the proper dimensions were. Oh, I am definitely taking creative licenses. There are points where you're winging it. Uh, yeah, that'd be kind of. Since uh, since the beginning, <laughs> I do think this is going a little a little more smoothly than than you were uh, feared at the beginning. It's going well enough. I I always uh, I I'm sure anybody can relate to this. Um, I always look at it when we're done, and I'm like, ah, I thought we'd get farther. I thought we'd get farther. Um, the nice part even, is I have no idea what we were expecting to accomplish with this model. So <laughs> I already feel like you've gone beyond what I thought you were going to do. Well, we met and exceeded Jody's expectations. So uh, once again, nice. actually, you know, bizarre. It's, it's probably nice for you to know that I have such low expectations of you. Keeping it real all the time wait so that means you're coming up on 19 years this month or next month i just hit 19 years yesterday congratulations back at you thank you indeed that uh that is fun to look back on It is. It's uh, it's curious to con consider. Well, this whole this talking about previous versions would be a perfect example of. I don't even. I don't even know what I forgot. <laughs> True that. I'm going to do a similar thing we just did previously. Give ourselves the illusion of some detail here. Or am I going to, yeah, let's do that. Let's actually make that uh, some geometry. So I'm going to move this up so that I can break it away from the other surface and we'll make that That a component. And 
and I am going to erase these edges I just so painstakingly made. <laughs> Wait a second. One, two, three. Yeah, I want 10 divisions and we're going to erase this last one. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Well, I'm not seeing a door to get in, so this is uh, the flawed design. I'm sure the fire marshal would come after you. <laughs> uh, indeed, indeed. Yeah, there, there are a few flaws. I mean, I appreciate you pointing them out. Just a few flaws. I like to think you that's, that's what I'm good at. <laughs> pointing at other people's shortcomings. Makes me feel better about myself. You know, Jody, does it? Not really. I kind of feel bad. If I'm being honest. Which is the best policy. That's what they say. Is it true? I don't know. I don't know who writes these policies. but I know. Like, who gets to make that up? Somebody said it's the best policy. And you're like, did we all agree to it? I don't remember. I wasn't even invited to the meeting. No. The room where it happened wasn't there. Uh, again, with the uh, taking creative licenses, let's just take some creative licenses with how these look. Oh. So after commenting on us being old timers of 19 years, uh, Lawrence pointed out or commented that he has been at the same place since 1983. That's a long time ago. I wouldn't have legally be allowed to work in 1983. Yeah. We had laws that in place to prevent phenomenal. that. Phenomenal. Congratulations. That's awesome. That, that's, that's impressive. Why? Oh, I keep I keep trying to copy these edges and they were broken and I didn't because of how I haphazardly constructed this, but I fix that. I don't think it does this, but I am going to widen this out. I'm going to add my other geometry for a moment. But let's do that and that. And go back in just because we can. Nice. Yeah. For some reason, this is making me think of when we did the model, the ATST. Not Ooh. you and me. And, uh, what was that? Can't, About a month back? Be... Yeah, all right. Okay. Sweet. Um, what do we do? There's these uh, pieces up here that overhang. So let's throw those in there. Let's 
since 1983. Yeah. You're still watching Lone Ranger, 1983, <laughs> probably. That's pretending I was. Yeah, you bet. You weren't watching Lone Ranger? I don't know when this, I presume that went off. There's all these shows I that I know. watched as a kid that I swear I had to have been watching in syndication or something like that. But yeah, I was, I was certain that I was going to become a cowboy because Lone Ranger and Tonto had inspired me. Kind of crazy to think because there's really not cowboy anything anymore. Ah, uh, there is. Okay, it's not a lot. There's recent, actually, Netflix lot, just had but... one that was pretty good. What was that called? Yeah. I, uh, happy to say that I was born late enough to not have had to have been a John Wayne fan because. That's the least interesting cowboy ever. Oh, really? You think so? You don't, you don't like uh, the old John Wayne, eh? Well, I mean, nope. I mean, I, I grew up on Clint Eastwood cowboy, so that's, okay. That's my Clint definition. Eastwood is a good like alternative, but if you were to go before John Wayne, I, I, I mean, I'd be curious out there who uh, who has an affinity for I don't know. I don't know who's before him, but then you get into the era of sort of like just like the singing cowboys and stuff. And I'm like, eh, that's that's kind of less interesting than John Wayne. I love how far off the weeds we are. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, why not? We're just like, I, why not? I'm trying to think of who the singing cowboys are. Gene Autry. Because I don't know what you're talking about. Right? Oh, um, Gene Autry. Oh, yeah, sure. And what was his silver? Is that his horse? Maybe. And there's there's one. No, I know silver one... was. Was it bullet? No, it wasn't. Because silver was on Ranger's horse. Yeah. Oh, what is it? Roy Rogers. Yeah, good colony. Um, there's one that came from uh, the the town I grew up in is near Wilcox. It's also near Tombstone. And there's one that came from Wilcox. I'm not remembering his name. That old singing cowboy from back then. I can't remember. This is why they don't typically let you and I hang out together. <laughs> oh, Trigger. That's right. Trigger, Trigger. was Roy Rogers' horse. I don't, remember, I don't know if you not we had a horse then. Yeah, I guess there's those because there's um, was was Will Rogers wasn't a cowboy. I mean, he was a cowboy, but he wasn't an actor, right? Oh, I, I don't know. Mixing him in with it. I don't know. I only I I only ever bring Will Rogers up because he was he was an Oklahoma asset. Nice. So that's where where I was born. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of good old cowboy stuff. I guess there's some decent modern stuff, but there's just not as much as my main point. Fair enough. I, I'd be curious to to try and uh, branch out to our friends across the ponds. Um, it feels like such a a U.S. thing. What's the yeah. what's the equivalent Although, of a cowboy I mean, flick in in the UK or in Syria or in India or in wherever you're coming in from. Well, you have the spaghetti westerns, right? How many, like a bunch of, a lot of cowboy stuff. Was, I, I presume spaghetti western men was filmed in Italy, but I don't really know. Um, That's me making assumptions. No, I, I don't think it was. I, I, happy to be corrected, but it was all directed by what Sergio Leone and he's an Italian uh, that director, and that's why they please correct us out there. We're probably way off our 
definitely outside of our mark. But Wikipedia says it is a broad, a broad subgenre of Western films produced in Europe. Okay. In the wake of Sergio Leone's filmmaking style and success. Sweet. So maybe it was his stuff, but then also anybody, people that were sort of trying to copycat that. Yeah, but yeah, you're right. The The term was used because they're produced and directed by Italians. Curious. And then we come back to modern day or even, wait, it's not modern because it's a long time ago. Uh, Mandalorian is sort of like the, they're trying to get back into cowboy movies. Right? No? I definitely have heard like that reference. No, yeah, like the, the lone... The, the the style is supposed to be sort of the lone Katie cowboy. said they had the same cowboy flicks. Lawrence said they had carry on cowboy. And I don't even know what that is. What's a so we definitely did that over here. Yeah. Helps out. I have no idea what that means. All right. Got that in there. Um, let's see. see. I'm not even paying, I haven't even been watching your model. I'm over here like trying, reading, reading <laughs> stuff on Wikipedia, talk, chatting up. I'm the worst co-host ever. What are you talking about? I'm just sitting over here just noodling. <laughs> That's funny is, um, when we were at base camp, I was talking to Allison. I think I was talking to Allison and Kara at the same time. And they said, like, they'll sometimes they will listen or they'll watch these just to see what it is, what I end up saying. And one of them literally texted the other saying, Oh my God, did you hear what Jody just said? And I don't even know what I said. And I feel like I just sort of wander <laughs> off. So they had me totally concerned that I was like cussing or doing something just completely either politically incorrect or socially incorrect or something i don't know <laughs> uh you would never do anything like that whatever could they be talking about so brad's suggesting he said the original star trek was called wagon train in space is no. that basically like all the space stuff that has been made was just been a remake of some some cowboy stuff I, now I'm curious. I, 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 is that true? That seems bogus. Wagon train in space. Wagon train in space. I want to just like wagon train in space. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny because now when you say it, I just think of pigs in space, which. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess what they had in the UK was. Uh, carry on cowboy and as lawrence said it was a series of 31 comedy films films of body humor and innuendo okay see i grew up the only thing whenever i was growing up the only step from the uk that i watched was benny hill which was very much body and full of in innuendo so go figure that stuff carried over to cowboys as well huh. Now Fox, I gotta go look up Brits, carry on you've got cowboy. Your sense of humor. Uh your own. It is your own. <laughs> it's very much very much it's his own beast. Huh. Carry on cowboy says it ran from nineteen fifty eight to nineteen ninety two. That's a carry that's a pretty cowboy. I'd say a long run. Well, I mean it's Films, movies, and there's 31 of them, so I guess. Huh. I'm still stuck on this idea of like Star Trek. Star Trek. The original Star Trek. It wasn't called Star Trek? I mean, well, like, you know how sometimes it'll have kind of not a, like a working title, right? Like before, before layout was layout, it was called Grizzly. Was it called Grizzly? Is that what it was? 
think so. That strikes my memory as correct. All the code names internally. Um, Sketch it for the web was uh, which was what before we released it. Can't remember. What did we call Sketch it for the web? Uh, I mean, it was P eleven, which is Project uh, Eleven, which was the eleven was from the reference. Uh, turn it up to eleven, which was Spinal Tap. Mm -hmm. Now I can't remember what what the actual project, what they were, what they actually started calling it though. Yeah. Anyway, um, obviously. Totally so TVTropes.com or .org says Wagon Train to the Stars is kind of as a trope that yeah referred to the original Gene Roddenberry Star Trek. Wagon Train to the Stars. Uh, Uh -huh. hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, I often kind of arrive at this whole nothing, nothing is really new. Everything's been, everything has been a then, done before. This is a, a rehash of it. Well, that makes, um, oh, what am I trying to think of? Not the movie Serenity. That makes uh, Firefly wagon train in space, like. That's on the nose. That is literally oh, yeah, yeah. wagons in you know, space. And the, the, the funny thing to me was, I mean, I grew up watching all this cowboy stuff, but whenever Serenity and Firefly, when that came out, and I was just like, oh, I just got cowboys in space. Like, literally, that was me speaking negatively of it and then once i actually like two years later i watched it i'm like oh this is totally cowboys in space and i loved it and i don't <laughs> understand what shifted in my head but um i will uh to to bring it back to you know modeling which why would we do that i don't know one of the reasons why cutting components are super finicky is because and I skipped over this. The first time I copied, I copied these two down. Um, they weren't cutting correctly. And it, and that's one of the reasons they're super finicky is they tend to, if you're copying multiple, it's a, it's a toss up if they're gonna retain their cutting or not. And if they don't, there's kind of no way to get it back. You have to like recopy them. And so like sometimes so I, I appreciate Aaron's hesitancy to use them for sure. Um, but man, then, when they work, yeah, when they work, they work. When they work, it, it works well. So I'm going to risk, can't see what I'm doing here, two times and see if that worked. It did. So we're good up here and I'm going to do the same over here. Copy those around a bunch. And uh, hopefully, I don't know, we'll make 10 copies. It's probably not enough. It's this most of the way around, but nice. Those, those are working right now. You'd think that this would be like, you could create just a wedge of that arc and then just sort of wrap it around, but you've got so many, so many changes that hardly any any face on this is the same from one spot to the next. Yeah. So this, I don't know. This this makes for an interesting challenge. Like I said, from you know, there's a lot of different pieces of this that if you're trying to do a, a better job than we've done here, more accurate. It'd be interesting. That that's that's why I love <laughs> freaking laser beams, um, laser scanners. Pick all this up and then see that was and that was the comment 
at the beginning, I don't remember who made it, but they said that this is the perfect excuse for you to go out there and do a LIDAR scan. You know what? It's a, I should have proposed this and said, Hey, Trimble, buy me finals tickets. It's work. <laughs> There's probably yeah. somebody at the top that has season tickets. So I just need to donate them. Not us. And I would not get away with that, but you know, nice try. All right, this is some sort of red. Better throw some colors on here and, and get close to wrapping this up. Don't forget to put a big Pepsi logo slash ball logo. <laughs> True. more detail we could have come back here and added but oh well no biggie not this time around and there's a balcony back here we could add or some detail here i mean i mean that i suppose that's one of the good things about this is there's no end to just pick another corner and noodle on it for the next 20 minutes. Um, I think it would have been really cool to try and figure out, again, we would have been like just making it up, but figure out this glass facade because that, that would look awesome to be able to put in some sort of structure right behind that and then make this glass like it is. That would be make it uh, very interesting but uh we'll just volunteer eric or aaron to do that you guys can go deal with the structure inside here yeah they're Top not here components. so yeah. what they get so i haven't i haven't seen right any comments that. at all from anyone else on the sketchup team they're not even in the chat <laughs> well er so. in defense eric is uh is across across the big pond eric is visiting our friends i think in sweden um oh the name escapes me he's talking to some people about uh a, one of the new landscape plugins coming out and aaron uh i don't blame aaron for not chiming in it's all good yeah i uh i had Instagram up and I think probably he's not doing anything here because he's busy working on his blaster model or his blaster 3d print of uh is it Hans blaster is that what he's working on um the most recent one it might be uh the the handle will definitely look like it um although I thought he was doing something different right now yeah, the handle yeah, that, made me think that, but there's like the main piece of it does not seem like it is. So I can't. Yeah. Maybe he actually says in the description that I don't read. I need to move this back here and pain. Where it is it says it's the pistol that Han gave to Ray in the Force Awakens. Ah, uh, that one. That was a a nice design. It was a. It's kind of kind of boring by comparison to old Star Wars weapons. I I do still like though that. Or most of them, even the new ones, that one included, they're all based on some sort of um, uh, you know, with some parts of them that are based on real real pieces that they're they're leveraging. 
What the heck? You know, this is all slanted. Is that? That's, that's because, yeah, that's because this is slanted. There you go. Uh-huh. Still biting me. I thought I would cheat my way through this one. See, that's the nice thing about any of my walls is they're slanted, but it's not by design. It's it's like <laughs> I like to think of sort of nature or God as making some sort of executive decision as to how to artistically modify my structures. <laughs> I um nice. a few weeks ago we had a hailstorm. I think I've I think I've talked about this, and it destroyed the roof on my chicken run, which was just like a PVC, corrugated PVC. So I had to tear all that off and like as quick as I could. I had to tear that off and put down new PVC. And my main takeaway was that whenever I built that, I did not know what I was doing. That thing is not square and not straight. And none of my stuff lines up. And I don't even know how I put a roof on it the first time because this time around, I'm like, how did, what? what's going on here? Obviously it was not uh, built by a professional. It was the first structure that I, or the second structure that I've ever built on my own. So, well, kudos for that then. I mean, <laughs> for whatever it's worth. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've gone back, right? You go back to one of the first furniture pieces I've ever built and it's still holding together, but I'm like, that is some so so work. <laughs> I, I do. I don't know why I, th I think any of us who do who build stuff, the joke doesn't wear old on me. When you have something like that and you're working on it and some, you know, somebody else is around, you're like, who is the shoddy, you know, person who yeah. built this? And you just give yourself so much shade for building a piece of junk. Back in the day. Who? Who indeed? Who indeed? Well, as Transom pointed out, you got to start somewhere. I don't. Do. I don't hate myself too much. The only only thing that I get mad at myself about is that it is such a it's such a hassle to try and work. And now, while I hold myself to higher standards, I have to work with the bones of what a less experienced version of myself did back then. Mm -hmm. This is the curious little detail that you're really futzing over here. Oh, okay. I see what you're doing. Futzing is, is the correct technical term though. <laughs> you are absolutely It is right one of my there. favorite words. Um, <laughs> I had a cousin back in college, and his term was scattywampus. People would park <laughs> Wait, scattywampus. Scatty? Interesting. Yeah. Because so, I've, I've heard cattywampus for something that is like, you know, all askew, yeah. but scattywampus feels scatty like he didn't know the word. <laughs> Curious. Nope. That's, that's the one. So that's what stuck with me. You know what? What? What let, let's call it? How about that? We'll uh, that looks that looks legit to me. We'll, we'll call I it. I think you should submit that to to Google to replace. Oh wait, it's in the three D warehouse. It's ours. You should yeah. submit to Steve to have that uh, replace it. I'll get right on that. Uh, is Steve still with Google? No, 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 no. 3D Warehouse is not with Google. 3D Warehouse is with Trimble. And oh, Steve oh, Steve. Is... Sorry, our Steve. Goose, yeah. our good yeah. friend Goose. Our Steve. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know what. I don't know another Steve. Steve, I don't I know. Thought you were talking I know. About. Um, well, now the name escapes me. Maybe I'm thinking of the wrong person. Uh, never mind. Quick, move past well, it. Save in, me, in Joey. Case, save me. Yeah, in any case, this turned out really, really good. Nice job. <laughs> Thanks. There we go. Well, 
Okay. Uh, I didn't so, even realize you were modeling over here. I was just all over talking to myself, talking to everybody else. So you managed to do some nice work while I wasn't even paying attention. I hope everybody just had a, a good noodling time because that's what this one was. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here, shadows. Yay. Throw those shadows on and... You do real nice work, Tyson Karcher. Oh, yeah. thank you, Jody. Thank you, sir. You are too, too kind. Or as Peter said, I hope you've had a ball modeling this arena. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Peter. Nice. I hope everybody else did, too. I had a... Uh, I did have a ball modeling this. It was fun. It was fun. little little noodle session so thanks everybody for sticking around with us um yeah thanks I a lot i don't Hope you know have a, a what we have good sunny in store yeah for next week um, for next week i don't know what we have in store uh but trust it'll be something less you noodly, there something you more had, interesting was there something you said you had to be sure you mentioned today i forgot i don't think so i don't think we're got anything on the agenda that needs to be yeah so okie doke i don't know thanks for hanging with me jody it's always fun thanks everybody else for uh spending time hopefully you just could sit in a pub and uh glance over and comment on singing cowboys and base yeah thanks wagons. that was a lot of there's a lot of good chat today i <laughs> i uh had a lot of fun even if i was not paying attention to what you're doing as well as much as i should have i still uh that was, was good it was good fun yeah. so uh enjoyable and um everybody have a, a good weekend a safe weekend and we'll see y'all on the flip side see you guys next time